Good evening and welcome to a brand new episode. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Though today the guest I have with me prefers to call me Sid, as many people do. And I'll tell you what, he is someone, I know it's a cliche to say he needs no introduction, but really the work that he does has a legion of fans all the way from Hollywood to Bollywood, from uh, New York to New Delhi. And so, you know, when you think about what this company, this brand, and then this individual has been responsible for, over the last few years, well, you'll understand what I am trying to get at. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my guest on Freewheeling today. And it is Professor Jerry McGovern, OBE. Great to see you. Good evening or good morning to you, Jerry. Hello, Sid. It's, nice to see you. It's not so well. As are you and... Uh, I'm, wor- I'm warrior-like. <laughs> like I like the hair. <laughs> yeah, it's nicely slicked back today. It's It's... It's behaving itself today, let me say. Yeah. Yeah, I had to, I had to oh, work sorry. at it. <laughs> no, but it's great to you see know, you. You know, if your hair you know, goes in more, it makes you look bigger. Did you know that? Didn't know that. Your head's slimmer, it makes your shoulders look bigger. <laughs> Good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. I'm, yeah. I'm going to use that. Proportion is the, is the name of the game, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, there's so much that we have always discussed I know with you uh, when it comes to uh, of course the work that you do Uh, today I think it's the first time that we are uh, you know discussing all of this in a very different setting it is the circumstance that's led us to this online live discussion so firstly thanks for your time I know you're at home and so I appreciate it Um, the last time we met was at the Los Angeles Auto Show where you were bringing the Defender to the US market for the first time Um, and shortly before that I'd had the chance to see the car in the UK uh, I have to start by asking you first about the Defender. I mean, it is really what everybody is still talking about. I get it. The uh, you know rollout could have been smoother if we didn't have this ongoing crisis right now. But but still, your thoughts on this car and just over the last few months, the kind of massive reaction it's got from the world over. Well, first of all, I I personally couldn't have wish for a better introduction for the car in in terms of the reaction to it. Uh, First of all, when we showed it for the first time, um, the response was incredibly positive, uh, overwhelmingly so, and the the sort of data and the analysis that we've done on it proves that. It's not just a perception, it's it's the reality. Without going into the detail of the actual numbers, the order banks have exceeded, you know, expectations. And then also, um, it's, it was great to see that even some of the traditionalists have warmed to the vehicle very quickly. And I suppose the question was, when I, when, when, when I got up there and showed it at Frankfurt for the first time, I did say, this is the new Defender and it is the most capable Defender ever yeah. made. And, you know, that was a big statement. And our recent sort of um, test drives, press drives in Namibia, have proven that. The press is saying it is incredibly yeah. capable and it is the toughest. So it's the duality of those two things that are inextricably linked that I think is resonate, well, will resonate with, with people. So unfortunately, you know, this pandemic has come just at a time, you couldn't wish for worse sort of timing in terms of launching a new vehicle. But you might argue it will create even more desirability for it. So I think you've always got to look at the, the positive out of the negative. Point about what might happen now in the market. Uh, we don't really know that. And I understand that it's going to be an evolving situation for some months and some, you know, some days ahead. But uh, the, the consumer, there is this sense that people are likely to move back towards personal mobility away from shared mobility or, you know, hailing services and things like that. Uh, and then if that is true, they're also going to be a little bit more frugal with their money. Uh, does compactness become something that takes your attention quite strongly now? I won't specify where and how, but just um, 
smaller vehicles. I think, well, I think one thing we have to bear in mind is that um, you know we we don't first of all we don't produce ordinary vehicles. We don't produce commodities. I think in the commodity world, whether or not it's a car or anything else, I think you know there'll be some strong challenges there because people will be reluctant, will hold back. I think. Um, in the world of luxury and premiumness, you're talking at a higher price point generally. Yeah. And yeah, I think that the products and brands that will do best are the ones that supply those products and services that have an emotional connection with, with their consumers that hit on that visceral level. Because I think there'll always be a desire for those things providing they're done in a way that are relevant and, and sustainable. Yeah. Um, in answer to your question, before this pandemic came about, we were looking anyway at you know how we wanted to move the brand forward in terms of the product offerings. And you know, compact vehicles have always been one of those things that is an opportunity for us. So I don't think necessarily the, the pandemic will have speeded that up for us and as you say we don't know what's going to happen yeah. you know there might be people out there that can't wait to get out and buy something you know? and in the sort of in the world where um, you know a certain price point people you know can take these crises um, the impact on them personally and their personal wealth isn't as great clearly we're going to have some difficult times there's no doubt about that and for me design of the product and the desirability of the product becomes more important because people are naturally going to become far more selective about what they buy. I think there was no debate on the fact that all the recent products that we've seen from you, in fact, by just recent, we go back several years now, um, mm. they've, they've all been extremely attractive. They've been commended and lauded for being attractive. And I think, uh, you know, your customers and, and fans certainly have endorsed that too. Uh, but given what you just said, does it become more incumbent on you then that, you know, the, the next Range Rover or the next whatever that comes from you then, um, even from a marketing or from a from an engineering perspective, there is going to be a greater focus on being extremely attractive? Well, I mean, we, we put, again, irrespective of the pandemic, one of the things I've tried to do over the last 10, 12 years or so at Land Rover is, is campaign for the relevance of, of design and the importance of design together with engineering to create products that are truly unique and desirable. And design is the conduit for that. You know, yeah. design leadership is something that is really important to our to our vehicles and to our brands. You know, other companies may say that, but it doesn't necessarily follow through. And we've set our organizationally up in a way that allows us to do that. And one of our greatest advocates of that has been Mr. Tata <laughs> yes. and Mr. Chandra as well, in terms of making sure we don't lose that, that focus on design and on desirability, because mm. that's what differentiates us. And that hasn't, you know, that, it, it, pro it will become more important to the consumer, I believe, but it was important to us anyway. Um, and I think, you know, you've said it in terms of what customers think of our vehicles generally in terms of the desirability. Um, I think that is something that is, is being recognized in the marketplace. We do have a unique point of view. It is based around the philosophy of modernity and doing things that have a level of honesty and integrity but ultimately vehicles are beautifully proportioned, are refined, elegant, whatever it is within that strategy. And people are recognizing it. You get so, so caught up with the, with the romance of the new Defender. Uh, the Evoque just came to market too, the new generation. It's also been received really well. It's uh, you know, got a lot of uh, people talking about how much more capable it's gotten and yet it kind of holds on to the essence of being an Evoque. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember talking to you about this, but I want to quickly just get your reaction on how it's been received, what you've heard from people, and how you feel about that. Well, again, I think that um, the, the reaction has been incredibly positive. And I think what people are recognizing is that something that's quite important. The original vote was, in, was very successful, you know, from a 
from, you know, I can remember the volumes for that were relatively low in terms of aspiration. We exceeded those massively. But more importantly, I think that car resonated with people because it stretched the brand and it, it, it meant that Land Rover, uh, Range Rover could mean something else, something that was more um, youthful, exciting, uh, dramatic, etc. And it, it is a design that doesn't have it, so particularly when it first came out, you know, there weren't really many cars like that around and with that dramatic falling roof, rising belt line, that overall visual sort of robustness. Now, people have recognized that why change that formula, all the customers that love it, how do you actually take that and make it better? And that's what we've done with it. We've made it more sophisticated, more grown up, uh, more precise. It is totally different in every aspect when you look at the detail of it. Every surface is different. It's got stealth technology in the lamps. It's got all these things that are natural evolutionary improvements in terms of this technology, etc. But when you look at it, you say, that's an Evoque. The good thing about technology, of course, is that it allows us to connect and, you know, do some of this much more, much more easily than, than in the past. Uh, but has it been challenging? I mean, you know, you don't have clay models, you don't have just that daily interaction. Well, <clears throat> clearly it's been challenging, but uh, there have been some, it's been quite fortunate for us in a way from a design perspective, because we are at a stage with a lot of our programs yeah. where we've gone through the stage of needing models and we're going through the final phases of maturation. So a lot of that support work, where design is doing very much a policing role, um, that can be done reasonably well remotely. And then the other element is that with the new programs we're developing, uh, we're, in that, we're relatively speaking in their infancy, a conceptual stage. So again, you know, a lot of sketch work can be done and a lot of things that don't have to be done producing models, but that time's going to run out quickly, you know, we need to be getting back into the studios as quickly as we can, because we do need to start producing those models again soon, because in, in the design business, you know, despite what some people think, you can't do it all, you know, <laughs> virtually, you have yeah. to create physical models, um, particularly when you look at the relative investments that our business has to make in these things, that in order to make the right decisions, you need physical properties. But, but how often do you get I'll together? I'll put my 40 years of experience on the line with anybody who wants to argue with me about that. Not you, clearly, Sid, but you, know, you always get people saying, oh, you can do it all. Oh, yeah. Them. Well, they've never designed a mm. car before if they think that. Not all of it, yeah. No, but how, yeah. how do you uh, interact with the team? Is there like a daily call? Oh, or how do you do? I, I'm, we're having design reviews um, every every other day. We've got teams, um, so I can look at visuals on the screen. Um, I usually use a big screen for that. Um, I'm having meetings nearly every day with my design leaders. And of course, my job isn't just about developing the direction of our designs as a, as a senior leader I'm also having to look at the business and how you know how we bring people back who we need to bring back um, and all those sorts of things as well as the brand itself besides of course getting back to to the studio and your team is there someone you're looking forward to meeting maybe yeah there are there, there are a couple of people um, one is actually my good friend Mr. Tata, Ratan Tata, who I've been staying in touch with through this. Quite funny, you know, when I talk to him, I say, how are you finding it, uh, Ratan? And he said, it's like being in prison. <laughs> quite funny. Um, I was planning to uh, visit, to take a few days holiday in October and visit him in Mumbai. Hopefully I can still do that, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, so I haven't seen him for quite a long time. He tends to come over to our studio every yeah. three months or so. So I do miss him. 
uh, is a, is a, a lovely man. Um, the other and uh, a, very, a great inspiration for us um, and for me personally always has been, um, and he's done a he's done a lot for our business. Without him, we wouldn't exist. No doubt about that. The other person um, I was looking forward to see, but it got cancelled, was the Queen. Oh. Uh, because um, I, I don't know if you know, this year I was fortunate enough to be honoured uh, with a, an OBE. Um, I don't know if that means anything in India. It's, it's uh, Officer of the British yeah, Empire, yeah. Um, which is a recognition of what you've done in your field. Uh, and she normally presents those or um, another member of the royal family at Buckingham Palace, but clearly that got called off. Uh, so, um, but I have met her before, and um, I'm a big royalist, I'm a big fan of, of the royals. Um, so hopefully that won't be too far away. Well, uh, for us, uh, even Mr. Tata is like royalty, so yeah, so both yeah, in both exactly. cases. Yeah, he is. <laughs> the, 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 he's big, if anything, whenever I see him at the, at, in, in India at the motor shows, He's, uh, he has more people following him than the than the Bollywood movie stars. I've yeah. witnessed that. Yeah, yeah, you've seen the crowds. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I, I did introduce you as OBE at the start, but uh, but it was uh, oh, yes. wrong of me yeah. not to congratulate you because the last time we, I think this just happened, right? December was it or January? Yeah, it, was in, it was in the New Year's honors list. So ah, it was, yeah. Uh, January, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So no, so many congratulations. I think it's a it's a great recognition and uh, a fitting one as well. Um, so one last thing, and uh, I know it's an unfair question because it's like asking to choose between uh, your your own children, but uh, your favorite uh, design that that really sort of hits all the spots for you in the current lineup. Well, <laughs> you know, to me, to me, they're all family. All yeah. of, I love all of them, but you know as well as I do that um, the newborn is the one that will always get <laughs> the most attention for a while. So yes. you know. You know what that is that's the the defender and uh, i can't wait to see more of them on the road i can't wait to have one um i think it's going to be people are going to love that vehicle and the others as well but uh, i didn't want to come and sit down just with my t-shirt on because it'd be obvious i've been in the gym and too i did i thought it might be a bit disrespectful so i thought i'd put my jacket on. i appreciate that and you know you're always very dapper when whenever we've had you on any conversation, but uh, but this one I think you know will always be a little bit special. It was nice of uh, you to have taken the time to speak to us from home. Um, yeah. I do hope we meet soon, which means that things are going to normalize for that to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I said, can't wait to drive the Defender. Anyway, it's been very nice talking to you. No, it was wonderful uh, well, talking with you. To all the people that watch this, stay safe. No, thank you. Uh, we wish you the okay. same. And uh, in fact, once again, thanks for spending time with us. Um, all the best to you and your team, and of course, the family too. Okay. Thanks, Sid. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 So that then was uh, Jerry McGovern, or Professor Jerry McGovern, OBE, speaking with us from home and talking about all the priorities for Land Rover as a brand in the coming few days. And then, of course, that massive reception that it's uh, received for the new Defender. Remember, that car has been announced for India, and it will be here hopefully soon. All of those timelines right now remain fluid, but I'm going to keep saying it. I can't wait to drive that car. It was wonderful talking with uh, Jerry today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please do react to what you've seen. If you step out for the essentials or if you are back at work in a limited capacity, please drive safe. Please wear your seatbelts. Definitely keep your masks on. And uh, yes, stay safe. Take care of yourselves and your family. Bye-bye.